Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Moe. So today I wanted to start off our uh, time together by sharing a little poem with you that I pulled up off the internet. And it has everything to do with what we're doing in the video today. It was written by Ronald Duncan, so let's get started listening to his beautiful words in the poem, The Horse. Where in this wide world can man find nobility without pride, friendship without envy, or beauty without vanity? Here, where grace is laced with muscle and strength by gentleness confined. He serves without servility. He has fought without enmity. There is nothing so powerful, nothing less violent. There is nothing so quick and nothing more patient. The horse. And yes, that's the subject of the video today. We're going to be painting a horse. So it's going to be done in a splashy, fun manner. And let's get started doing that right now. And if you like what you see in this video, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, you guys. Let's get started. All right, everybody, ready to get started with this painting of horses? I've been chomping at the bit to do it. And it's finally my weekend, so I'm able to take some uh, good quality time to do it. First of all, I have this reference photo of a mare and a little filly here that are in action running through their corral or whatever it is. And I just love the action of this. As in a lot of reference photos, I'm going to eliminate a lot of the background noise in this and just focus on the horses. So what I do to start with is I've got my color copy here and I'll turn it to black and white, blow it up as I have here. And um, I take the color out of it so I can see the, the values better. It really allows me to see the values better. Then what I can do is take a piece of tracing paper, put both of these over a light source. I have a light box, but you can use a bright window and trace around the important parts of this image. So that being done, I can put that aside and then grab my watercolor paper. In this uh, instance, I'm using Arches 140 Cold Press Natural White, I think it is. And um, you can put your tracing over the light source, put your watercolor paper over the top, and then trace your image transfer your image in that way right onto your watercolor paper. That way you're avoiding erasing and making these adjustments. You've already got it done. I often do this with my own drawings. I'll just sketch it out on my sketchbook and when I'm happy with it, done all the adjusting and erasing and redrawing I need to do, I will trace around it so I can transfer it onto my paper and eliminate the erasing part. Um, erasing can mess with the surface of your paper. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. So in this painting, I want to do a splashy background and this horse, I'm going to bring this back into the, into my view here and bring out my masking fluid. I want to mask off some of the white areas of these horses. So when I put in this background, I don't have to paint around the white. So I keep my masking fluid in the fridge because over time this can harden and get gooey and gummy as it is here in this lid. You can see it's just, it's just hardened and you can not use that. It does not work. So yeah, that, that is, not usable, but inside the bottle, it's still fluid. So what I'll do is I'll take this little skewer that I've cut the pokey end off and just stir gently. There's all kinds of different masking fluids. I use this incredible white. It turns a sort of a yellowy color when it's dry, but there's others that uh, turn gray or kind of a greenish color but they all do the same thing. It's just a matter of preference. So stirring gently, and you don't wanna shake this stuff because it will get bubbles in it. And when you're trying to put it on your paper and the bubbles form, it just, it 
doesn't work very well. So I'm stirring and then I'm gonna, it's pretty, it's still pretty fluid. It's not a, a very clumpy in there. So I'm just gonna wipe this off. I could let it dry and peel it off later, but I'm just gonna wipe it clean and put that in the garbage. And then I'm gonna pour a little out into my little container here and put my cap back on so I'm not leaving this exposed to the air. Then I'll show you my applicators. There's different ways you can do this. Um, I've used brushes at times, so this uh, one I'm not gonna do that, but when I do use a brush, I'll get the brush wet, add some liquid soap and leave it in there, and then I'll use that brush to brush on my masking fluid. Uh, the soap makes it easier to clean afterwards, and I always use a brush that I'm not using currently in my painting. I always use an old brush because I don't want to ruin my good watercolor brushes when I can use an old brush. But I'm going to set that aside, not using that today. There's also a little tool called the Incredible Nib. And I don't use this very often just because it's kind of hard to clean. Um, it's a little um, got some action going on out there. I <laughs> don't know what's going on. Um, anyway, it's, it's a little hard to clean, but it does have a nice point on it. I could use it as well in this, and then this end is wider, so it would spread a little bit broader of an area. There's also this fine line applicator, and you can find these in your art supply store or on Amazon, and come out with a little point pointed in that goes right in this tubular metal piece and you can get some pretty fine lines with this. Although I have to say that a lot of times, even when I don't sh shake this, it can still bubble up. So you have to be pretty careful with it. And I just got a little drip up there that I'm not going to worry about right now. It'll dry, but I do want to put this little top back on. Okay, next. And this is what I am going to use. I just found, uh, had somebody demoing this, and I thought, gosh, I have some of these clay shapers. They're little sculpting tools. This is a miniature clay shaper set, and it's got a variety of different... Um, tips on it but I think what I want to use is this one is more angled and so I can spread out a broader area with it and um, so I'll put these aside but it's a silicone tip so it's easy to clean it doesn't hold a lot of the frisket like a brush would because it is silicone so I have to dip back into my um, container here frequently. So all I'm going to do is take that and put it in the areas that I want to save. This is a way that we can save areas that we don't want painted. So one thing to be careful of is you don't want to come back up into something that has started to dry because it'll just peel up and it doesn't work very well. So make sure that you're only dabbing. If you do come back up into something, just dab over the top, don't brush, don't brush it. And I'm gonna come up here into her forelock there and just really outlining the areas that I want to be left white that will be in contact with the paint. So I'm gonna do part of her nose, don't need to do the whole thing. Just giving me enough of a uh, area where if I kind of go over with my background, it'll be protected. So I'm just gonna to continue to add this until I've got all the outer edges and anything that's gonna be left white, 
I'm gonna do her whole leg. Just using the whole area of that silicone. And the tip is really nice because I can get some finer, a little finer edge, come into some smaller spaces that way. And I've got a pretty thick when I put it down there initially, and then I can kind of drag that before it dries too much. Okay, now we need to let this dry completely. So if I painted anything over the top of it, it would just smear that masking fluid around, and I'll know when it's completely dry by the color. It'll be uh, more see-through and it'll be a little bit more yellow. I can still see there's some creaminess and it's gonna take just a little bit to dry. So we'll come back to it when it's dry and start our background. Okay, so I don't know if you can see the difference, but that's a little more translucent. And so we are good to go on adding some more color, some co actually some color to the background here. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna let you know the colors as I go, hopefully I can remember, but I'm gonna do some raw sienna, burnt sienna, raw umber, burnt orange, um, probably some Primatech colors, Sodalite, um, Bronzite Genuine, Amethyst Genuine, and I'll list them down in the comments or down in the description below. Um, so you can look at that and refer back to it if you wanna see the colors. So I've got a little straw here, I have a plan for that. So what I'm gonna start by doing is, um, I could either spray it, a little mist. This is a fine mist sprayer. And start dropping some color in. So maybe that'll be a good start for us. And I'm gonna do a little grayer, cooler look back here. So cobalt blue is gonna be one of the colors that I use. And I'm gonna put some burnt sienna with that to gray it down. And that'll be a good start for some of this. And then we're gonna set that aside so it's not in my way. And I'm gonna add a little bit of raw umber and raw sienna. It's got a little puddle of water. Let's soak that up. And so raw umber rinsing my brush between paint wells. Raw sienna is a bit yellower. Amethyst genuine is a complementary color to the earthy yellows there. So I can have that as, as set over here to add to that as I go. My palette is stained, but it's not coming up. That's burnt orange. Carbazzo Violet by Daniel Smith. Most of these colors I'm using tonight are, um, are Daniel Smith colors. There's a couple that will be from Holbein. But I think I'll start off with just a bit of this raw, Sienna, and I'm just touching my brush in. I wanna make this really fun and not too complicated. That's that Burnt Sienna um, Cobalt Blue mixture, and I think maybe just a little bit too brown on some of that. Let's go a little bit bluer. That's gonna be gray, a grayed down color. And then I am really just trying to be fast and fluid, fast and furious. And I've got kind of a design uh, going here in my head. I like the, the angle that's happening. So I'm gonna stick with that. I've got some raw umber, or not raw umber, burnt umber there. The brush I'm using is a 
Escota Versatil, and it holds a very good amount of paint and water. And so I can really work on moving that paint around because there's quite a bit of water on the paper. I wanna come right up under this little guy and under mama. Okay, um, and I'm really just grabbing colors as what feels right to me and what might help my composition. And then I can set this aside and do a little bit of misting. And when I mist over here, that color is gonna go wherever the water is. The water is just gonna spread that out a bit. Set that aside over here. And I do wanna do a little bit of splattering. So I'm gonna get this burnt orange and some carbazo violet, mix up a dark, color and there's a couple of different ways you can splatter different methods i guess you could say um i'm going to do a blue in there too not methods um a, a couple of different tools to use for splattering and i love this little brush that i have here it gets them all over the place so i'm going to soak up a little bit of that um it is a three eighth of an inch flat but you could also use, I had it here a minute ago, a toothbrush. Here it is. And with your toothbrush, you can splatter as well. It's gonna be some bigger droplets. Let's do a little amethyst genuine. Put that in there. I want this background to be fairly subtle. A little bit more in here. I'm gonna soak up some more, some of this water that's settling. And also you could use this Escoda brush. It has a really nice release. So I'll do a little bit of that in there. Do some more in here. And one thing I want to show you, and this is a straw, just your, oh gosh, McDonald's. It's not paper, it's plastic. I've had it for a while. So I'm just going to blow some of these little spatters. Probably could turn it upside down might be a little bit easier. And that might have been a little over the top on the side, but it's not a problem because I could just soak it up. Can have a lot of fun doing the um, toothbrush, or not the toothbrush, the straw. I think I'll add just a little bit more. We're gonna go more of the cobalt blue up in here. Kind of give it the look that it's being kicked up by the hoofs. And I can help that along a little bit, spread it out. And I also wanted to add a little bit of white. This is Titanium white, which is uh, one of, it's a watercolor. Um, titanium white and Chinese white are watercolors. Titanium white is more opaque 
than Chinese white. I could also go with gouache. Soak up a little bit of that. Kind of puddling in there, but I'm gonna bring my paper towel in, soak it up a little bit, and I can add a little bit more color up in here. There's some of that amethyst. This truly, truly is just fun, 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 and it's something that you just practice until you kind of figure out what works and what doesn't work as well. But I like the way this is looking. I don't want it to get too dark. I want my ponies to stand out a little bit. So just going back to a little thicker mix of the carbazel and burnt orange to get a little bit deeper. And that's gonna spread out because they're still pretty good amount of water on the paper. Soak a little bit of that up with a thirsty brush. And this time I wanna, I'm going to put a little gouache in here. Gouache is also opaque, water-based. This is gonna be interesting to see if there's a huge difference. So there's my gouache. It's kind of getting mixed in. Tip it up a little bit, maybe it'll... So as the background here dries, that um, what I put over the top of it in the gouache and the white is gonna stand out a little bit more. And I think what I wanna do up here is just go a little bit more diluted of the burnt sienna and cobalt. Okay, let's let this dry and see what we have when we come back. And before it gets too far into the drying process, I wanted to do one more thing was add some intentional blossoms. So blossoms are something that happens when there's more water than paint that's going into a painted area. So where I've got paint on my paper and I just put clear water in there, it is gonna cause some blossoms that can be very cool in a background like this. So it's also pretty wet in here again. I'm going to soak up some of that. If you find that that's happening, don't. that's why I always keep a paper towel handy. So just keep that handy and you can just blot stuff up as you go. And problem solved. Okay, a little bit of blossoms in here. And then we're gonna leave it to dry. So the background is plenty dry. The way I can tell if it's dry is it's flattened out. It's no longer uh, bubbled and raised on the surface. And also it is not cool to my touch. So I know that it's dry with those clues. So now we get to remove the masking fluid. I'll take off the parts where I have filled in. I can do, do it with my finger like I'm doing here, or come in with either a white eraser from your pencil, and you have to be careful not to erase some of your lines that are there to help see where you want to place some of the shadows and such. So this stuff just peels right off. It's a, a resist, so it's kind of like rubber cement. It's really fun to peel off. And I've got 
not too much to peel off, but I can do it with that, or I could even come with this gray rubber kneading knead eraser and peel it off. I kind of feel like this one works a little bit better. So I'm gonna set the gray one aside and use my white and just get this all peeled off. Like I said, I am for now I'm gonna leave the areas up here that are unpainted because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, if anything, up there. So I'm gonna just leave those alone. Okay, so I've got it uh, removed and the way to make sure you've got it removed is run your hand over it and you'll be able to feel any parts that have been left behind. So got that all nice and removed and you can see how that's allowed me to keep the whites of my legs. Not <laughs> whites of my legs are no problem. <laughs> they are not tan, so. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in with some of the coloring on the horses and actually, oh, that might be okay. I'm gonna leave that and come in with some of these more golden colors and this part right here, right along the mask that I didn't get quite to the edge, there is a little brown spot. So I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna try to be pretty soft in laying these colors in. I had initially thought I would do a wet into wet application, but I think it's just fine to do it like this and just add some darker areas within that wet into wet color part that I'm putting in. So that's what I decided to do. And I'm just gonna drop in a little touching in. Now I don't have to worry about that white right there because I've got the liquid frisket on it. So just gonna drop in a variety of those golden colors with some burnt sienna and maybe even a little bit of burnt orange mixed with that carbazole and spread it around a little bit. So burnt sienna, burnt orange mixed with carbazole, a little bit of raw sienna and raw umber. And then I wanna pick up just a little touch of that. I'm gonna come over here and do virtually the same thing. And that is the way that I'm gonna be working through this, pretty much all of it. So, and I am gonna soften edges as I move along so it's not hard, no hard edges here. There might be a couple. Sometimes a hard edge is nice little lost and found edges are nice. So now let's see, let's go over to this, coming up into kind of her neck head area. I'm gonna come just right along this line. I don't wanna, I want that to be defined, uh, definitely different, lighter, color so a little harder edge there is just fine and I'm gonna just work really quickly to bring these colors down so it doesn't get so I don't get edges that I don't want I want it to stay pretty soft so as wet as long as it's wet and I come in with some other color, it's going to soften up. So once it dries and it gets to a place where it doesn't have a sheen on the uh, paper anymore, then you're in the danger zone, we call it. And that means you're gonna get blossoms that you don't want. And I don't want blossoms in my horse. So now I'm going to get more water on my brush as I come down so I can get my paper wetter. 
And remember to not come in to the white of the leg. Wouldn't be a huge disaster, but I don't want to do that. I want a little bit more of a, oops, put it in the wrong puddle, a little bit more of the burnt sienna color. I'm just softening this as I go. And I can touch in some darker color while it's still wet. Some of the raw sienna and raw umber. And kind of work that around before it dries too much, which it's getting very close to being too dry. And then when it does get too dry, I will just simply let it completely dry and then come back over it with some clear water and float some other colors in there. So I just added a little of that burnt sienna cobalt blue mix into her leg. And I'm gonna get a little bit of more of a warmer gray coming down into her foreleg there. And I am referring back to the photo. For this part, for the splashy part, I just wanted to get some splash down. But for this part, there's a little bit more finesse. So I just got some raw sienna and I'm putting a little touch of that amethyst genuine kind of gray that down and this is the side that's uh, more a little bit more of a grayed down color so this has actually got the light hitting it now I want to come up into her face with a little lighter color I think this is dry enough and that's a little too much color so I'm just gonna soften it out with some water. Add a little bit more of a deep color with the cobalt and burnt sienna. And touch it in right here. There's a bit of a shadow under her some little shadowy areas around her eye. Just dabbing that in, just barely touching the paper. The raw sienna, we're trying to create form here. So the light and shadow, the cool and the warm, they all play into making this, this form, the form of this horse. So, okay. That's, uh, that's a good place to stop on her. And now let's come into baby, little baby. I'm gonna just come in around those white areas. I've got my masking fluid up there. And staying away from the white of her legs, this little filly's legs. Coming down and coming up. And softening. There's some white up here. And darker in the chest. So I'm gonna come with some darker value. Burnt sienna and the cobalt. There's a little bit of masking on still on that paper. I can see it rolling around there. And then on her leg here, a little bit lighter coloring. And on 
her face. It's a little bit more of that burnt sienna, darker value here to pop out against the mom's belly. And this is uh, called charging in the color. So where I'm just touching it on there, I've got a little bit of different color on my brush. And if I just touch it in, it's just, and it's still wet enough in that stage of drying that it's still got a sheen on the paper, I can just tap it in and it'll spread around. Back leg here, I'm gonna go ahead and put more of a grayed down color. That's really a white leg back there, but because it's in the shadow, it's gonna be cooler. And I don't need to add too much to that back leg, just indicating that it's back there and a little bit darker up in that crevice. And that's gonna pop out really nicely. Okay, so I think I need to set this aside and look at it for a little bit and see where I wanna take it to the next, um, in the next level. Except really quickly, I do wanna add some shadow to this leg here. So I got it a little bit wet. There was some color in that brush, but I got it a little bit wet and I'm just gonna softly add some shadowing. And also to these four front legs. And maybe a little bit more to her inside of her leg. Okay, I think that at this point, uh, yeah, it needs to dry a little bit, so let's do that. Okay, I think that's good. So, working with the same colors here, um, I am gonna just get a little moisture in here, paying attention to where the shadowy areas are on her chest. I've got a little bit of a dip right there. So I'm just gonna drop in and let that flow around and soften. So we get the form going of her chest and leg here. And this is dark, so I'm going to come down, kind of grabbing into each petal. Something that takes a little bit of uh, time and practice is just knowing which, which colors you want where you want to put them, and it all comes with practice. So you go row as you go. You don't automatically know how to paint. It takes time and practice and patience sometimes. So don't give up, keep going. Kind of like Dory, just keep swimming. Same idea up here, I'm gonna add some water to that. Maybe a little more burnt orange, that's kind of purple. We're gonna let this dry a little bit and then come in and do some of her eyes. I don't wanna stick my hand in that, so let me, let me dry it real quick. I'm gonna go to a smaller brush so I can do the eyes and I can use a little combination here of the same color. So I've got the burnt orange with the carbazzo violet and if I took uh, put a touch of green in there, hooker's green, that's gonna give me a really, really good dark. So that's a lot of times the, the I don't have any 
well, I have it, but I don't use it. I don't have lamp black. I don't have black from a tube. I have like Payne's gray and neutral tint, stuff like that, but I really don't have a tube black because I like to mix them myself. They are um, more, they have more life to them. So with a straight out of the tube black, you don't get quite the life that you can get from a, a, a black that you've mixed yourself. So this is going to be needing to be taken off because I've got another nostril over there. And I'll need to do that. But I need to figure out what I want to do. I think I want to put some trees back there. Very distant trees. Let's get baby's eye put in there. Very light touch. A little bit more around mom's eye. And I'm going to come right next to that. I think it's dry enough that it's not going to spread too far. So I want to just put a little color around that so it doesn't stand out quite so much. And I have to say this again. If, if I were not doing a demo, I would be spending more time with this. But... I wanted to show you the approach so you could have something to work on. And as I say that, you're maybe saying, I don't have a picture of a horse. Well, you can find all kinds of images on the internet. And assuming that you have a computer, since you're watching this, you can go on line and find horse images and then you can put them uh, add them to your photos and print it out just like I did with the black and white and the only thing I will say about that is it's fine to practice with just don't um, forget about copyright. There's copyright that you have to be aware of. So if you're using somebody else's image, you probably shouldn't go um, making any money off of your beautiful painting that you're gonna do. I'm just adding a little bit more of that burnt sienna and cobalt mix. I might've gotten a little carried away there. So blotting that up. Okay, and so I like where, where we're at here. Maybe a little bit darker in her eye. Kind of some of that spread out a little bit. And a little bit darker in baby. Okay, so let's, um, let me let this dry so I can peel off that masking fluid. Oh, nope, not going to do that. I said that I wanted to do some background trees. So, very subtly, I'm going to use that 3 8 of an inch brush that I used for splattering and grab some raw sienna to this. And I'm going to put some of that amethyst in there. It's going to neutralize and gray that down a little bit. And then I want to put in a little bit of, um, let's do a little bit of thalo. That's super, super strong. So I'm just going to add it a little at a time. I do want that background a blue or green. Very subtle, so just got to work on getting, getting that just the way I want it. And then a good idea is to swatch it out and see. I think I want a little bit more blue in there. Not quite that much.
maybe not quite that dark. Maybe a mix of the two. That might be nice. Yeah, a little bit more along those lines. So I'm gonna just get this wet right up to her face, right to that horizon line. And bring it from there. That's nice and diluted, a little bit more blue. Just very subtle background trees. I don't want too, too bold back there, but. Just a little hint that there's something back there. And just fading that out as I come along here. I usually don't use that as a as a palette, but that's kind of I kind of liked what happened there. So okay, and then over here as well. So let's start it wet, and I like to um, indicate the trees are back there but I don't want them to look like little soldiers. So I think of it as a, a heartbeat line. You can come up in irregular ways and make it look like it's got some life. So we're gonna soften some of this and then let it dry. And then I'll come and take that masking fluid off. How about touching in a little bit of, I was gonna go and let it dry and then I saw this white sitting there and thought that would be kind of fun to touch some of that in back there. Okay, now we really are gonna let it dry. Okay, I'm not gonna take this too much further, um, but I do wanna do just a couple uh, details here at the end and this is something that is not finished um, but I will probably come back in and work on it here over the next week or two because there is there are things that I can see that I would like to do more of and detailing takes a little bit of time. And so I'm gonna think about, think about what I wanna do and then add some more stuff to this as the week progresses. But I do wanna take that masking off and just add a couple of little touches. I think it looks pretty good as it is. It definitely doesn't look finished to me. So that's why I feel like I need to add some little details. And I feel like the horses themselves could stand to be a little bit darker. And that will help, help them stand, uh, come forward from that background. So I'm just gonna do a couple of little things so you can see how it makes a difference. A little bit more of that burnt orange in there. So brighten things up, warm things up, bring things forward. So on and so forth. And I probably should be using a bigger brush. Back to my number six. 
just because I'm filling in bigger areas, it's always better to go with a bigger brush. So just pulling that down all the way down, putting a glaze over it so it darkens it up. Putting a glaze over her head, a little more yellow, raw sienna there, brighten that up. Coming into her mane, a little purple in there would be nice. Cobalt violet light, just very subtle. And coming over the top of her back, there's still some masking fluid in there. I better let that dry first. And define where her tail is. Define where his little, this little girl's, it's a girl. This little girl's tail is. And also brighten up the colors here. And I just added a touch of yellow in there, raw sienna, just to kind of tone that down a little bit. Also just a dab of coolness in the foreheads of these beautiful horses. So I'm gonna come down just a little bit more with that grayed down color. And there is a little bit of pink on her nose. I'm gonna add that and a little bit more gray. Put a little touch of black over here. For her nostril, I didn't add her this little girl's nostril. So there's that, and then let's come down right under her mouth, or right under her nose, right in the front of her, tip of her nose. So I think that's about all I'm gonna do with this. And like I said, this is, is not a finished painting, but it is, um, showing you how I would approach a subject like this. You don't have to copy the photo. You can take things out as you want and add things in and be fun and splashy and um, yeah, just have fun with this. And if you don't have a picture, like I said before, I believe, just pull something up on the internet and print it out and go from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and try it yourself. Pull a picture up off the internet and get started. So you grow as you go and um, practice makes progress. So get started. Okay, we'll see you in the next video, you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you like this video and wanna see more. Take care.